Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a creepypasta called Gurgles and Bugman. This creepypasta was suggested by Chicken Fox Soda. Thank you Chicken Fox Soda for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. And for anybody else, if you have any suggestions for creepypastas or SCPs, let me know in the comments down below. Or you could also give me suggestions in my Discord, which is named after the channel. I read pasta. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you can check it out. And if I read your story, I'll be giving you a shout out in the next video. So again, thank you Chuck and Fox Soda for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. After my last experience, my parents reminded me of another story from my childhood. When you're five, your mind lacks the experience to make informed judgments or connect things which aren't obvious. Over the years, the details get fuzzy and forgotten. Speaking with my parents the other day, they cleared the cobwebs burying this story. I remember now much too clearly the story of Gurgles and Bugman. I just started kindergarten that year. Everyone's a friend when you're five, so I had no shortage of classmates. But coming from a poor family, I didn't get to see much of them outside of school. My parents spent all their waking hours trying to make ends meet and didn't have time to ferry me from house to house. So I spent my early years mostly keeping to myself, playing with the random assortment of knickknacks from the shelf in my room. Being short of money gave my family a habit of hoarding, so they hated to throw anything out. One particular item on the shelf was a small, old-fashioned TV set. A wooden veneer box about two feet wide by a foot tall. It had a curved glass screen that took up half of the front panel. Besides the screen was a large chrome dial used to switch channels. At the top sat an antenna formed by two terribly twisted wires. When my boredom made me turn it on, I'd usually just get static and snow on that glowing black and white screen. I twisted the heavy clicking dial hoping to pick up some local broadcast. Mostly it would be some ghostly image and incoherent sound fragments, but one channel was always crystal clear. It was the Gurgles and Bugman show. Gurgles was a clown, but not a common one. He wore a thick black suit that draped his tall, skinny body with a matching tie, and oversized novelty clown shoes to complete his distinctive outfit. His pupils were completely black, like polished ebony marbles, with no trace of white around them. Black face paint around those eyes and across his cheeks and mouth made him look like a manic grinning skeleton. It was only the crazy crop of curly hair sprouting off the sides of his head that gave him a more human look. As much as gurgles freaked me out, Bugman scared me more. He was short and round, like a hunchback dwarf, with a dark cape. He had prosthetics covering his eyes to make him look like a fly, and a mouth that was rotated 90 degrees and opened it from side to side. The show itself was like a candid camera, where pranks played on unsuspecting people. It would always start with Gurgles and Bugman hiding away at someone's house. Gurgles would face the camera, staring at you, his bony fingers touching his lips. When the unsuspecting star of the show came into view, a laughing track would begin to play. You would see them go about their nightly routines, oblivious to the conspiracy that Gurgles and Bugman had involved us in. We'd see them making dinner, or on the lounge watching TV with their family, or quietly doing their homework. Then watch as Gurgle and Bugman stole their pen, or moved their glass, or made things disappear behind their backs. The camera angle would change as Gurgle and Bugman shifted their hiding place from the dark corners of a room to cupboards, the ceiling, or under the furniture, all the while looking back 
at you and winking. The closer they got, the louder and more laughter from the soundtrack. Eventually, when everybody went to sleep, a victim would be chosen for their prank. Waiting in a closet or under the bed, once the victim fell asleep, Bugman would crawl and gently climb in besides them. His jaw would open sideways and out would come a sharp straw that he would stick in the person's neck. This always paralyzed their victim because sometimes you could see them struggling if they woke up and saw gurgles and bugmen on top of them. The laughing track would then be extra loud and uproarious those few times the victims awoke. Gurgles would make faces at the camera while the audience laughed and Bugman would use his straw to drink from the person's neck. When the victim stopped struggling after a few minutes, and the laughter would turn to claps and cheer. With Bugman finished, Gurgle's face would fill the whole screen with this impossibly wide, sharp tooth grin. Then he'd whisper, See you again soon. The way those all black eyes pierced the, through the screen always gave me chills. I hated the show, but would always be too afraid to go near the TV while it was running. One day, the TV mysteriously disappeared from my room. My parents told my 5 year old self that they sold it to pay some bills. I accepted that without question, I was kind of glad it was gone. But yesterday, when I asked them about the TV again, they exchanged nervous glances, then filled it in with some missing gaps from my childhood. Halfway through that year, Derek, a classmate I didn't know very well, had died in a horrific circumstances. He was murdered in his bed with a stab wound in his neck. No evidence of break-in was ever found, so his distressed parents were taken into custody as primary suspects. They denied all the allegations against them. At the time, Miss Nolan, my teacher, told our class, I'd apparently explained to her that Derek couldn't have been dead because I saw him and his family on the Gurgles and Bugman show the day before. When Miss Nolan mentioned to my parents what I'd said, they had immediately taken the TV from my room, driven it to a junkyard and had burnt it to nothing but ashes and molten metal. The TV was in my room because it had always been broken. It was never plugged in the whole time it sat on my shelf. Whatever I saw on that screen, it wasn't from a station. So that's my story of Gurgles and Bugman. But I'm not sure if that's really the end though. After all, do Gurgles and Bugman still perform their nightly show for some unsuspecting viewer somewhere in the world? And if so, who will be the next star?